Hello, dear friends. Greetings. Super very warm welcome to, to today's Egyptian experiencing Egyptian mysteries lab or rather journey. It is 22 of August 2023 and we are about 13 hours before the sun moves into the sign of Leo uh, from the sign of Leo into the sign of Virgo reminding us again about the energies of the Sphinx. So today we will partake in a ceremony of blessing the water, both ours and planetary, and in a celebration of the Syrian New Year. So, so we will start with a, a, a short presentation and then we will go into the journey itself. So measuring of the time in ancient Egypt changed over eons, but the calendar we are using for this lab speaks of one year, starting or rather ending on 13 July, with the next year starting five days later. 19 July was the date when the star Sirius would reappear on the pre-dawn sky such as observed from the south of Egypt, nowadays somewhere in Sudan. Of course, <clears throat> this date changes with the latitude, with Sirius reappearing two and a half, half weeks later at the level of pyramids in Giza, which are about 1,000 kilometers, a little bit more, from that south where it appears on 19th July. But this very fact actually allows us to hold this lab late August and still be in the energies of Sirius rising. For example, Sirius rose on the morning of 10 August at the latitude of New York on 21 August in Belgium, and it will reappear in the sky of Denmark on 27 of August. This is one of those cases where the linear measurements of time offer us occasions to observe and participate in the magic of interplaying cycles. And to add even more wonder, there are those five days between the end of one year and the beginning of the next, which were considered as time outside of time by the ancient Egyptians. The story of Thoth, the god Thoth, winning five days by playing a game with the moon so that goddess Nut, the sky goddess, can give birth to five more deities, speaks of opportunities of birthing new ingredients into our own lives. These five days do not obey the normal laws and we can or we are even invited to give life to new impossible ideas and energies. Our journey today brings us to the River Nile, one of the few planetary rivers that flow from south to north. Its source was a geographical mystery for many generations. Today, we know that there are three main sources of the massive flow we call, we call the Nile. There is White Nile, also called the Mountain Nile, which originates in the Lake Victoria. Its name comes from the white clay that the water carries. There is Red or Black Nile, surfacing in the Northwest Ethiopia, whose name probably comes from the rich soil it distributes. And finally, there is the Blue Nile, which contributes to 85% of the total Nile water and which springs in the Lake Tana, situated in Ethiopian highlights. Interesting is this appellation that talks about blue, red, and white, colors that are found on majority of today's national flags. 
the Egyptians themselves kept the red, white, and black colors. And I was told that the white represents the Nile, the red represents the desert, and the black symbolizes the fertile soil. Not sure if that's true. There are, of course, many other interpretations. Interestingly as well, the Mediterranean Sea was in some epoch called the White Sea. And we still have the Black and the Red Seas on our modern maps. The Nile was, and still is, of vital importance to peoples inhabiting otherwise desertic land. In ancient and not so ancient Egypt, the annual flood of the river would bring its treasure of nutrients for the arable land. During around four months every year, the water would overflow the banks, rejuvenate the soil, which will thus be ready for the sowing season after it. So the ancient Egyptians actually observed three seasons, the season of inundation, the sowing season, and the harvest season. Today, the river brings livelihood in other manners. It still irrigates the agricultural fields, but in a continuous and controlled manner. <clears throat> this is a result of the construction of two dams in the south of Egypt near Aswan. These dams serve the purpose of harnessing the power of the great river into producing electricity so needed for our modern ways. On the other hand, the Nile had a significant esoteric role. Its annual flood nourished not only the physical vitality, but also the cultural and spiritual lives of peoples that lived around it. There is this story about Osiris, the god Osiris, being killed by his evil brother Seth, who cut him in pieces and dispersed them all over Egypt. Osiris' beloved Isis searched and searched for him, and it is told that wherever she would find a body part, a temple was built. The only part she did not find was his penis that remained in the Nile, it is told, and which is interpreted by saying that the, his semen or creative essence is still fertilizing the land and everyone who lives in it. People's physical, but also their soul's growth is thus magically aided. Maybe for this reason, the Nile was considered as a carrier of our collective memory. Memory which does not only concern our past, but also, and ab above all, the knowledge of who we truly are. The Nile was also regarded as represented, representing the earthly reflection of the entire Milky Way. We are told that when waters were calm, one could observe the stars on its surface. And it was also regarded as the spinal, as the spinal column of the planet. And indeed, when we look at it, its form does uh, remind us of the spinal column with its um, roots deep in the south. And the delta itself looks like the head nerves or even the crown chakra. The Nile's annual inundation coincided with another natural phenomenon that was immensely important to the ancient Egyptians. The brilliant star Sirius reappears on the pre-dawn horizon in the middle of the summer, at the same time when the waters of the river would begin to overflow, signaling thus the beginning of the new year. The Egyptians considered the star Sirius to be the power behind the sun, the sun nourishing our physical bodies and Sirius providing sustenance 
to our spiritual bodies. From the teachings of the Master DK, we today know that there is a special and direct relationship between our solar system and that distant star found in the constellation of Canis Major. And speaking of dogs, the ancient Egyptian pantheon also had Anubis, who is known as the opener of the way. He is the shaman, the guide, who leads souls through their transition between worlds or planes of, of existence. Again, the ancient Egyptians probably knew much more than it is commonly admitted and weaved this knowledge into archetypal stories that survived the test of the times and can be still accessed. The story told about Sirius was that it was a stellar manifestation of the goddess Isis. Here we see the image. Uh, the, uh, the image shows a detail from the temple of Isis on the Thila island where we see Isis protectively surrounding Osiris with her magic wings. wings. And Isis also had a sister, Nephthys, whose one of the names was the Great Priestess or the Lady of the Temple. Isis, also called the Mother of Us All, is a goddess who connects with her magic, through her magic, the above, and the below. She knows all the gods by their true name and calls on them when it's their turn to intervene. She has many names, such as the throne, speaking of the requirement for all the kings to become Horus, a magical child of Isis and Osiris, if they are to rightly rule Egypt. <clears throat> and she was also called the Lady of Scorpios. There is a story that speaks about Ra, the sun god, unwilling to share his true name with Isis. Although she insisted heavily, Ra would not give up, fearing that Isis would somehow misuse this information. So, the story goes, she called on her army of Scorpios that stung Ra, and he became ill. Isis rushed to him and fiend therapies and it, until it was obvious that nothing would help, unless Ra told her his true name so that she can call on his spirit for help. Fearing for his life, Ra complied, and so Isis became the most powerful goddess there is. I'm conveying this story to make another parallel with the ageless wisdom. In esoteric astrology, we are told that Scorpio is under the influence of inflowing Anaxerius, the great star of initiation, as the day called the brilliant star of sensitivity. Thus we have Isis in her stellar form knows, known as Sotis of Sirius, who is called Lady of Scorpios and also the Great Awakener. And we know how the sign of Scorpio is important for today's humanity and for the initiation we are going through as a collective. Another interesting fact is that when depicting Sothis, ancient Egyptians portrayed her upholding a five-pointed star on her head, around which we see lifted arms that were a symbol of a mortal soul being elevated, elevated to divine being. We are told that one such statue was placed in the temple of Isis on the Philae island in such a way that the rays of Sirius at the precise moment of its helical rising would fall on it 
and thus signal to the priestesses the reappearance of Sotis, which in Greek means the soul of Isis. And it is through the power of her unending love that Isis awakened her beloved Osiris and from death elevated him to eternal life among immortal stars. This story is about an enlightened ruler, Osiris, who was killed, who resurrected, and then ascended. It is also a story about eternal life, love, <laughs> between Isis and Osiris, who for ancient Egyptians were portrayed by the constellation of Orion, who is Osiris, and the star Sirius, or Isis. So as I said, our journey brings us today to the River Nile and to a very specific, specific spot on the river where on two nearby, nearby islands were built two temples. One dedicated to Isis on the Philae Island and another dedicated to Osiris on the Bige Island. The, this temple was called Abaton which in Greek means untrodden place because it, only the priests were allowed to set foot there. And it was also believed to be the place where the body of Osiris was buried. So here at this, at this image, we are looking at the temple of Osiris as if we were standing on the Big Island. Sorry, we are looking at the temple of Isis. As, we, as if we were standing just next to the temple of Osiris on the Big Island. I don't know who the artist was, but it looks as if this image was uh, done some sometimes late 19th century. So please note the structures on the Big Island, the, the portal, the doors, and the columns of which I took a photo the night of the full moon in August this year. And the photo is, was taken from the side of the river. And by the way, I'm organizing and guiding sacred journeys to Egypt. And if you are interested, please let me know. So here the presentation stops. We will soon be undertaking our subjective journey. And as I have designed this presentation, assuming that you already participated in previous presentations, please, if there are any questions or comments or anything that you would want to share, please do so now. You can share your video at this time, raise your hand, speak, unmute yourself. <laughs> So in the meantime, and before we begin, I would like to point out that my English pronunciation is not always good, as you have probably heard already. So when that happens, while I'm guiding the visualization, please do not stop and try to get a word that I mispronounce. Just follow the flow as, as, as much as you can. There is a chat, let me check. <laughs> Thank you, Tomas. So at this point, I would suggest a brief pause, three, four minutes. If you have to step away, this would be the time. I will put a piece of music on. And when you hear the music uh, subduing, you know that we will be starting soon. And in the meantime, of course, if there is anything that you would want to say or ask, please don't hesitate. Sorry about this. <laughs> so we have four minutes of pause. Please 
please don't hesitate to share your video so it will it will help me see who is there and how you are looking and I <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Okay, so let's get ready. I'll switch off, switch off our videos and see you after. So let's begin by closing our eyes, our physical eyes, opening our subjective senses and let's breathe. Let's have a couple of profound resp respirations. And then let's allow our breathing to come back to its natural rhythm. And without changing it or controlling it in any way, we just follow the air. It goes in and out of our bodies. The 
And let's pay our attention to our hearts and to the eternal spark that lives in it. The eternal spark that awaits only our attention to offer its brilliance all through us, from our centers, and all the way surrounding us. Let's nourish it with our love, knowing that this eternal spark does belong to each of us individually, and at the same time is a part of the big flame of the universe. Everything that exists is accessible through our attention at this very point in the holy of holies of our hearts. And to nourish it even more, we'll become aware of its connection with the very heart of the Milky Way, all the way up through the stars in the very center of our galaxy, where our consciousnesses are completely free, where all the possibilities are whispered into our ears. And then on the other side, our consciousnesses are held in a loving embrace by the heart of our beautiful planet. Where there is nothing to do, nothing to become, where we are loved exactly as we are. And for a breath, for a couple of breaths, I just allow ourselves to perceive these two states which make of us who we are. I will breathe in into our hearts, bring back our consciousnesses and with it all the gifts of unconditional love, intelligence, inspiration, intuition, all of it encountering in our hearts, loving each other, marrying and co-creating our existence. And briefly we'll connect also with the heart of our future selves. And with the heart or hearts of our past. And from both of these directions, we receive gratitude and encouragement. And so standing in this eternal light, we find ourselves in Egypt. It is night. We are in a boat that is just approaching the big island. We are reflecting on the past year. We remember the challenges to choice and all the events that brought us here and now. Here and now, which is this magic time outside of time, when we are given an opportunity to give birth to manifest that which long awaited our attention and love.
the boat across the, the island, and Anubis, our open-hearted guide, invites us to step on the shore through a stone gate and onto a path leading upwards. We are moving up the hill, following a steep, sinuous path toward its top, from where emanates a soft glow, somewhat illuminating our way. The path is steep, and yet, our steps become easier as we identify the things that we do not need to carry over into the new year and we let them go. Events, experiences, reactions that serve their purpose are now ready to be left behind and we mount ever more effortlessly. As we finally arrive at the top of the island, we realize that the glow we have been perceiving while going up emanates from a single tree. We are standing on a plateau there are other people and beings spread around. Let's pause for a moment to take in our surroundings. The trunk of the tree is made of a beautiful sparkly wood spiraling around itself. And for a moment, we distinguish in its form the figure of the god Osiris, who is smiling at us, welcoming us into his domain. His stretched arms expand into branches, upward and sideways, creating a shimmering dome. Under which the glowing roots are stretching over and into the ground. We are invited to approach and enter the glowing dome. Let's pick our spots. Some of, what, some of us will want to sit with our back leaning on the trunk. Some will choose to sit facing the tree. Some will climb the branches. Others will lay on the ground. Everything works. We are on a sacred island 
in the middle of the Nile, which flows from south to north. On the western shore are hills. Here and there, we see Bedouin fires. To the east, there is another island, Philae, with the Temple of Isis. And above us, the night sky, stars are shimmering. You know, you are one with nature. You speak its language. Listen. A deep gong is heard, turning into the direction where the sound came from. We see a procession forming. Participants, all dressed in white, are walking down a path descending towards the Nile. As we join the procession, There is an atmosphere of serene expectancy as we descend the twisting trail. As we approach the river, the light is sufficient for us to distinguish that we are walking on a path leading to a circular pool of water. A feminine figure welcomed, welcomed us, raising her palms in blessing. Is she a priestess or Neftis herself? She enters the pool and as she does so, we see that she is surrounded by six Devic presences, each representing a direction. They distribute themselves around the edges of the pool and thus create, it, create a protective field. The pool is now illumined and we see its bottom and we see the water lilies that float on its surface. Neftis invites us to come in. One by one, we enter the pool and try to find our place around the priestess who is standing in the middle, water up to her waist.
our movements are creating waves that unsettle the surface until then completely calm. As we are, each of us, determining our position in one of concentric circles forming around Neftis, the water comes again. The priestess invites us to make a conscious link with the water. And we start by feeling its pleasant warmth, its welcoming sweetness. And now let us remember what beautiful and important role the water has in our lives, in our individual lives. Let's ask for forgiveness for the situations where we misused it. Let us tell to the water, thank you for everything you do. Let's feel the gratitude into the water. Let's ask the water to speak its memory to us so that we can remember what is our part in the plan. water response. Its language is understood by the waters in us, the substance of which the bulk of our physical body is created, but also the waters of our emotions. We listen to the conversations engaged by the waters in us with the sacred water in the pool. As we do so, we notice that our conversations with the water are creating vibrations ascending the pool again. We see the waves. We feel the movements of the water around us. We, we sense the undercurrents. All of it created by the conversations with us telling our stories. And so we realize that the only way we can actually receive the message of the sacred water in which we are immersed is for the waters in us to calm into a receptive mode. How do we do that? It's not about ignoring. It's not about suppressing. It's not even about willful control. So what is it about? The 
the sacred water that surrounds us has answers. Let's say so. And so, one by one, and each of us gradually, we are informed by the sacred water. And we know each plane of our existence knows its part. And they are all working in harmony with each other, providing a pristine vehicle for our higher selves. The vibrations each of us now emits are in harmony with each other too. And the water in the pool is visibly transmitting this state. The surface is still. The currents below are quiet. There is a total, there is a sense of total balance. As if the pool and everyone in it are in a zero gravity space. And we lo allow ourselves to experience the peace and the ease that comes with it. As we stand, the surface of the water appears to lower, and soon we find our bodies completely outside of the sacred liquid. Only the soles of our feet are touching the water. And we realize that it, it is not the water that has receded, it is us who are now able to stand on its surface. We register this as a joyful surprise and do nothing to disturb it. Another gong is heard. One by one, the members of the procession and us with them, we turn towards the Nile. There is something happening on the shore of the island of Philae, just across the river. At first, we hear a chant so different from the one chanted on our side of the river. Melody, wavy rhythm, there is joy in the voices coming across the Nile and even laughter. Luca, samasta, sukino. Avantu Loka Savasta Sukino Avantu Loka Savasta 
comes the aroma of the incense, some sweet and flowery perfume that mixes with frankincense smoke coming from the island on which we stand. The glow coming from the two islands allows us to distinguish somewhat the flowing, colorful robes with which the procession on the island of Phila is dressed. Again, so different from the white predominant in our procession. As we watch and try to make sense of it all, another deep gong is heard and the lights on the two islands gradually subdue until we are left in a complete dark of the night. For a moment, there is complete stillness, no movement, no sound, no other sensation than the presence of the river between the two islands. Gradually, our eyes become accustomed and we begin to distinguish faint points of light on the surface of the great river. And we realize these are the reflections of the stars shimmering above us. Entire Milky Way can be seen reflected in the water. And our attention is captured by the recognizable form of the Orion constellation. The sacred chants begin again, and this time they merge into each other and create a harmonious song, a praise to spirit, to life, and to all the beautiful ways it manifests.
the two processions led by a priest and a priestess respectively begin to move towards the Nile and soon we see them walking or rather gliding on the surface of the water. We follow and find ourselves gliding on the water too. At first a bit at Tavali, and then with more assurance we engage in the choreography that is guiding our movement into a fluid merging of the two processions. The rhythm is dictated by the chant and we soon realize that our dance is drawing a definite path among the reflections of the stars. Another deep sound is heard and the procession stops. Look at the position where you are. What is the star on which you are standing or rather upon which you are floating? Looking around you, you become even more aware of the energy flow that connects all the people in the procession into a group. Joy of common purpose links us all. You sense the flow that through the group links the space and the earth, the future and the past. And we give thanks. We send rays of gratitude towards the waters of the planet. We ask her for forgiveness and thank her again for the life she is sustaining. And please, at this point, please do use your own words. Offer blessings to the waters of the planet in your own way. We perceive the water's response and sense her pristine qualities expanding from this magic location in the Nile and towards the entire earth. The blessing is sent forward and backward up to the mountains where lay the sources of this great river and down toward, towards its delta in the Mediterranean Sea and through it into the entire water system of the planet.
as the blessings are being spread, another deep gong is heard and everyone turns to the east. The time is near. The moment when Sirius returns to the sky after its annual disappearance of 70 days. There is a profound silence among the group and also in the nature that surrounds us. A sense of expectancy is high as we watch the stars moving over the eastern horizon. There, a brilliant star rises, its light stronger than all of the stars around it. Its rays flash towards us and fall on the priestess standing in the center of our floating procession. Her entire figure seems to ignite. And as she spreads her arms, we see her wings and recognize a form of a five-pointed star. Her rays are amplifying the blessings that are being spread over the planet. The priest standing in front of her his figure also glowing with a radiant, radiant white light. He approaches her, enters into her embrace. And all we can see from that point on is a seven pointed star created by their love for each other. Isis and Osiris are together standing as one again. This is a moment out of time. The space time between the reappearance of Sirius and the dawn of the New Year's Day. This is when we direct our thoughts and desires towards the manifestation of the soul of our beautiful planet. This is when we are contributing to the inner sacredness becoming realized. What do we see coming? How does the new world appear to our imagination? The sky in the east begins to pale and the contours of the islands, the temples on them, our group standing on the waters become visible. As we watch, recognizing each other and the surroundings that evoke some deep memories, the sun rises, its golden disk illuminating more and more strongly. Until the sun rays 
are being reflected on the water and there is nothing to see but a golden glow. No sky, no land, no water. We find ourselves levitating in some sort of liquid golden light. We send our blessings and gratitude towards our guides, towards our spirits and souls, towards each other and the group, towards all the kingdoms of nature and towards anyone and anything in particular that we feel could use some gratitude. We feel a warm breeze that picks us up and softly pushes us back into our so-called ordinary awareness. Our attention is slowly turned towards our physical bodies and we pay attention to our breathing again. Our journey ends here. And I would invite you to pay attention to your physical body. Move a little. And then open your eyes slowly when it feels right. Of course, 
if anyone feel like that. You can open your video. And you're welcome to provide any <laughs> feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rita, for your kind words. <laughs> okay, so another deep gong is heard. And I'll put a piece of music <laughs> just to finish. <laughs> if there is nothing else to add, nobody else wants to speak. No. Okay. And now something completely different. Those of you who come in late, we are now having a little cooking session right here on the scene. Putting the pot on in here. And we'd like for you to join in with us and have a ball. Have a ball. Jump, I'd like to acquaint you <laughs> to jazz. <laughs> As the song says, love is in town. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here, for everything, for participating in the things that we just offered to the water. 
and I'm sure she will respond. She's responding already. Yeah, and, and the, the silence is good. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> silence is good, of course. Thank you. Bye.